If you're a frequent PNW Haunts and Homicides listener, you probably already know we're Birdie Ambassadors. We wanted to take a quick moment to tell you a little bit more about this awesome product. Birdie is the modern personal safety alarm made for women by women. In a situation where you feel threatened or unsafe, you can simply activate Birdie's loud siren and flashing light to create a diversion. Birdie is perfect to carry anytime because the device is lightweight and comes in a variety of colors. So important. Use our ambassador link and coupon code PNW Haunts and Homicides to receive 10% off your purchase. Like our social media handles, the coupon code is all spelled out, no special characters. You can find the link and promo code in our show notes or PNW Haunts and Homicides link tree. Have, Have a safe, safe ass day. day. Cassie. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, creepy people. Hello. Hello. It's actually Caitlin this time. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I almost forgot about that. We psyched everybody out. Just we a did. little bit. We totally tricked yeah. everybody. Nobody knew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is PW Haunts and Homicides. Welcome back. Hello, hello. Welcome for the first time if you're new. Yeah. I never left, so. Yeah, we never left. We do, we're just always here. Yeah. I thought for a second, I'm like, welcome back. I'm like, I was here the whole time, even though my brother said hello. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh right, 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 right. The creepy people. That makes sense. Now, Cassie, did I let it slip? Do you remember? Because I feel like at some point I accidentally like said something that might have been a giveaway about what this episode was going to be about. You're giving me far too much credit. No, okay. <laughs> Excellent. For remembering, for connecting dots. I just, <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> well, I had to stop myself a couple of times when we were texting back and forth. It was dangerously close a couple of times. <laughs> All right, well, good. Now, you guys, you have it on good authority. She's still in the dark. I don't know anything. <laughs> So this episode, I'm taking on another corporate scandal. <gasps> I know. That turned into true crime. Okay. Yeah. Remember the ghost cattle? Yeah, I do. It's not about them. Oh, well, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Just another example. But that was our holiday collaboration episode with A Nefarious Nightmare. Mm -hmm. um, so if you haven't listened to that, go listen to it right after this. This time, Boeing lied. Oh, I do remember you talking about this at one point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And 346 people died. My face. Literally, I was smiling. I was like, oh, I do remember that. And then you were just like, and then all these people died. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Bit of a downer. I forgot obviously. we were on the true crime episode. We've been having yeah. too much fun, I feel like, lately. Yeah. And it's time for Caitlin to just bring us down. So. Oh, yeah. Wait until you see what I have planned for us next after this oh my gosh do it do i need to lighten it up again is that what you're telling me i mean it couldn't hurt Bandage i am um, man part two yeah i am the queen of darkness oh. um so that count 346 people um it may actually continue to grow what? and we'll talk about that more in the Patreon bonus episode on this case. That's terrifying. Yeah. It really is. I don't like planes. Yeah. I don't either. And you know what? I'm really happy to not have any reason to need to fly too terribly soon. Lucky you. Yeah. I'm literally flying next month. <laughs> <laughs> 
So <sighs> great. Thanks for this, by the way. Yeah, I didn't realize it was going to be um, coinciding with an upcoming flight for you. So mm-hmm. sorry about your nightmares yeah. in advance. Um, I will have TSA pre-check, though. So. Yeah, so it'll just get you <laughs> closer to the death mobile oh, faster. <laughs> I really hate flying. Like, I get really, really nervous. Yeah, you know, for the most part, I don't think – I really was that nervous of a flyer. And then when we went to Europe, that one I was like, I'm going to need, I'm going to need something for that. That's a long one too. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's only like nine hours. It's over the ocean, right? Yeah. 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 And (laughs) you're like, wait, (laughs) geography. um... (laughs) Well, you have to like picture it in your head. Oh, she's like, this will be quiet. (laughs) Off to a great start. Okay. Guys, we haven't even had like any wine yet. So that's true. Here, let me reach for that glass too. Let's yeah. see what else I can knock over. <laughs> oh um, man. All right. All On right. To the death and destruction. Yeah. So this is actually probably a case that you've been hearing a lot about lately. And I'll be honest that it was kind of a doozy to put together. Indie Wire described the Netflix documentary, which Probably all of you have seen the previews or it's showing up in your recommendations. It's called Downfall, The Case Against Boeing. And they described it as a bland but infuriating Netflix doc that sifts through the wreckage. Oh, You guys, the assessment is correct. It's bland? (laughs) Yeah, it is a little bit. There's a lot of it that's really dry. It's talking about death. Listen, (laughs) I thought it was really good. I do think that probably if you're someone who watches a lot of documentaries and definitely if the angle of corporate crime is interesting to you, you'll still enjoy it Um, because I did kind of debate with that documentary having come out so recently if I wanted to cover it, but I will say a lot of the source material on this topic is very dry. Okay. It's extremely dense, like that bread you forgot about in the back of the cabinet. Mm. (laughs) But I've condensed this bad boy down, so it's hopefully a little bit easier to get, you know, just the infuriating part of the message. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm struggling to find the mouth words for this. So I'm just going to warn you all that if you thought airplane terminology would make any type of sense, um, prop sauce not. (laughs) Prop sauce not. No. (laughs) It's a very special type of sauce, and it means fuck no. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I don't want any of that sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I realize that I am not an engineer, but that's not even the problem. All of the terminology to me just seems mismatched. It involves math and or science, which is bad enough, right? But I also just picture at like the birth of aviation that they were already kind of trying to form this weird bro-y boys club. Mm. (laughs) It's seriously kind of like the sand lot or something where it's like they've got their no girls allowed <laughs> sign. Oh, God. <laughs> because all of the terminology feels just a little bit off. Okay. It's unsettlingly phallic mm-hmm. and oddly sexual. Awesome. Um, <laughs> What's the problem? Yeah. I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> I can't tell if that's just because we're like secretly 12-year-old boys or if it really is as weird as I think it is. So when you guys pick up on some of this, if it makes you giggle, I want to hear about it. Yeah. I need to feel better about myself. <laughs> so I did a massive amount of research for this case. Um, and then I got super pissed at myself because the number of hours I spent on this one I set out to keep this to one episode. So it'd be like the short and sweet version of the documentary and be a little bit lighter. But by the end, I felt like I could write a short book on the topic. Wow. Which is the literal opposite of my intent. Yeah. But (laughs) 
So the Patreon is actually getting a bonus episode, as I alluded to. Oh. Yes. So it's items that I just couldn't bear to part with, things I couldn't not share, but that I just couldn't really situate them uh, the right way into one episode. Yeah. Mostly because I started to stack up pages and it was, <laughs> it was getting a little redick. So. Redick. Redick. <laughs> so. That'll be a nice bonus for Patreon. Yeah. We've had a lot of Patreon bonuses, you guys. We, we just have. did the book review. Yeah, of The Phantom Prince. Yes. We haven't posted Hashtag about never it yet. Bundy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the Patreon knows about it. I mean, yeah. if you want to know about that stuff, that's where you got to go. But there's a lot of stuff on there. So mm. if you're interested. Yeah. So first I checked out the book Flying Blind by Peter Robinson. I also annihilated something like two dozen articles and the Netflix documentary on the topic like it was fourth meal. Jeez. Yeah. Did you get some chalupas with that? (laughs) I should have. This should have been an experience where I was rewarded with a chalupa. <laughs> I'll get Something. you one after this. Nacho we'll, we'll go get chalupas after chalupas. this. <laughs> and that was before I dived headfirst into a dessert consisting of a couple of news network podcast episodes on the topic. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I totally fucked your sentence there with all my Taco Bell talk. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I might just be hungry, and that's why we have all these food metaphors, but by the end of my research, I was thoroughly disturbed, which I feel Mm. like is saying something. Could you just not eat after? Oh, no, I'm (gasps) not that disturbed. (laughs) (sighs) Oh. Ugh, okay. Yeah. I gotta, like, get my giggles out before you get to, like, the real serious stuff. I know. I feel like we do this every time. (laughs) yeah oh gosh okay so if you have to take a flight anytime soon like cassie for the love of glob and all things witchy turn this off now okay turning (laughs) off my headphones she's just gonna sit here and not react (laughs) otherwise just remember you always put on your own oxygen mask before assisting others okay noted Okay. Is that what they tell you in like the beginning, the safety thing? Mm-hmm. I never listen. I know. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, they haven't changed it, I'm pretty sure, since like the 70s. Yeah, I or saw 80s. it on a movie once. I'm probably yeah. fine, right? It's probably good enough. Yeah. I mean, and then just don't sit in the the row where you're like, you have the emergency. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the emergency exit row. I don't sat sit in, that in that one time and she was like, can you do this? And I was like, I don't uh, know. Uh, uh, she like, was like, I need a yes. And I was like, yes. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, what happens if I can't? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's pretty intense. Ooh. I've seen them do that to other people. And I'm like, Mm-mm. nah, it's not worth the extra leg room. <laughs> no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> uh, yeah, of all people, I'm like, I'm not fighting <laughs> yeah. anybody for that leg room. Nope. All good. She's compact. (laughs) (laughs) On October 29th of 2018, most of us were probably knee-deep in spooky season activities and shit. In Jakarta, the passengers and crew of Flight 610 were getting ready to depart from Gate B5 in a brand new Boeing 737 MAX 8. The economical jet produced twice as much thrust that's what she said, as the original had when it rolled off the assembly line about five decades prior in 1967. That's a lot of thrust. Yeah. Also, that's a lot of decades to be producing (laughs) essentially the same jet. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. But with more thrust every time. Yeah. Well, naturally. The pilot, Captain Bavier Sunejia, was 31 years old but was experienced with 6,000 flight hours, most of which had actually been on the previous version of the 737. His co-pilot, Harvino, he apparently just goes by the one name like Cher. Oh. Yeah. Okay. He was no slouch either with about 5,000 flight hours, which is, that's a lot of hours. 
What's the average flight time for like a really good experienced pilot? Do you know off the top of your head, Caitlin? I definitely know off the top of my head. <laughs> I did a quick Goog. I was kind of curious as well. I knew most of these pilots had several years of experience that we're going to be talking about. Um, this breaks it down per year. Okay. So the average per year will be about 700 hours. Okay. And they are not to exceed a thousand flight hours within a 12 month period. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. That's probably safe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I mean, 5,000 or 6,000 flight hours, that's a, that's a pretty solid track record. Yeah. Yeah. Not long after takeoff, eight minutes of what was probably absolute terror ensued as the plane continually defied their very reasonable commands. Um, I've never seen a plane fight somebody, uh, Jeez. before, but they were basically just asking it to, you know, just fly, be a plane. Don't be a freaking adolescent teenager. Right. <laughs> exactly. Listen. Yeah. The nose was repeatedly dipping as the jet seemed compelled to draw further downward over the Jakarta Bay. <sighs> The co-pilot is thumbing through the Boeing quick reference handbook furiously all the while. The pilot asked a flight attendant to summon a Lion Air engineer that was by happenstance on board. Um, he wanted this person to come and consult with them, and he wow. handed the controls over to his co-pilot. Okay. Yeah. That's right about when the flight crew goes from subtle concern to plummeting 10,000 feet per minute. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. I'm holding myself. Mm -hmm. I really hate, I'm getting really, like, panicky right now. Yeah. Oh, God. You might need to medicate for your next flight. About this same time is also when the pilot begins praying in an absolute panic, because I don't know if you know anything about... Um, the levels that planes typically fly at. But when you're falling at 10,000 feet per minute, that's about as bad as it gets. That sounds terrible. Yeah. Like awful. Oh yeah. my God. Okay. About this time is when the pilot begins praying in an absolute panic. And we know this because of the black box recording. And if you know anything about modern aviation, or maybe you've looked into this case, you know that a black box is something that's typically on every modern type of aircraft. I know that because I watched Yellow Jackets. Yeah. Everyone go watch that right after this if you need more panic <laughs> in your life. <laughs> I've listened to the black box recording. Oh my God. Or at least the part that was released publicly. I have to imagine there's probably a heavily redacted version that is released publicly. And your girl doesn't have clearance for anything beyond what's publicly available. I'm looking into it, though. <laughs> yeah, get on that. Yeah. The plane hit the water of the Jakarta Bay at nearly 500 miles per hour at 6.32 a.m., which is never how you want to start your day. No. And it probably goes without saying that all 189 people aboard that aircraft died. Oh, that is so horrific. Yeah. Mm. Naturally, literally everyone is asking the same questions. What happened? Are these planes safe? What causes a brand new jetliner to crash seemingly out of nowhere? Because you have to remember, these are brand new jets. Yeah. The National Transportation Safety Board and Boeing both sent teams of investigators to Jakarta as the story became the top breaking news story. The FAA is headquartered in Seattle. They called in Boeing engineers to try to work through what had gone wrong. And if you don't understand what's wrong with that sentence yet, it's going to make a little bit more sense okay. by the end of this. Turns out it was a pesky bit of automated software 
but it turns out it's even more devastating than bad autocorrect. MCAS stands for Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System. It was automated software that moved the horizontal stabilizer, which is a small wing, on the plane's tail. This crash was caused by a single bad sensor that was misaligned, causing the system to fire up. Oh my god. Like one tiny thing. Right. Which is why no system should have a single point of failure. If you learn and retain one thing other than a general sense of hatred for corporate greed, let it be that. That's crazy. Yeah. Like I can't even – you've been making these damn planes for so long. How – Yeah. Is this where the rage time? comes in? Uh, Yeah. I mean, that's going to – Does it get worse? Yeah. It's going to get a lot okay. worse. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Save some for the Patreon because okay. – Okay. <laughs> so much rage. One pilot in the Netflix documentary says something simple and innocuous like a Mylar balloon could have very easily had this effect. So literally a single sensor that can be set off by a balloon in the sky. What? You asked if there would be more rage. (gasps) Just a balloon? (laughs) Mm -hmm. The malfunction was said to be due to an oversight of the pre-flight inspection crew. But honestly, if the system wasn't fucked, it wouldn't have mattered. They may have made an error on their end, but let's... No. There's a larger error here. (laughs) Priorities, okay? In the field of modern aviation, this sensor is not considered a particularly relevant or important indicator in most cases either. Hmm. So it's not something that they're paying attention to because it just doesn't... It doesn't normally carry this kind of weight anymore. Jeez. It's just a little sensor. But it gets worse. Pilots actually discovered to their horror that MCAS was only briefly mentioned in the abbreviation section of the Boeing handbook. It was designed to work in the background. If it sensed the angle of attack was too high, it would bring the nose down. So that's why even though you're pulling up the plane is immediately correcting, oh my big air bunnies there, correcting and trying to pull you back down by the nose. No, no, I set up. I'm the pilot. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the Lion Air flight, it had activated erroneously and repeatedly because the angle of attack sensor was broken. Mm. The FAA systems engineers, pilots, everybody, No one knew it existed. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So they certainly didn't know how it worked. That's just, I feel like if you're running a plane, if you're flying a plane, you need to know every single inch, every single centimeter of that plane. Wow, you know what, Cassie? You're basically a pilot right now (laughs) because that's exactly what all of the other experts said. Weird. Wild. I feel like this is just common sense, though. Like, I'm not special in thinking this. Yeah. Oh, my God. No, no, no. Don't sell yourself short, (laughs) you smarty pants. I'm a pilot. (laughs) The Allied Pilots Association then has a meeting with Boeing on November 27th after the deadly Lion Air crash. Boeing brings their lobbyist to the safety meeting, but no training materials, no PowerPoints, User manuals, nothing. Hmm. Captain Dan Carey is an APA member and an airline pilot. He recorded the meeting covertly. So I've also listened to that black box recording as well. Ooh. At least in part. Uh, Captain Dennis Tajer was there as well. I hope I'm saying his name right. I didn't see a pronunciation guide on it, but I, I think phonetically that looks right to me. They're basically our aviation besties. So at this meeting, they are literally told that a software update will come about in six weeks. First of all, they both said bullshit because nothing happens in six weeks in this industry. Right. And how is a software 
update going to fix this? They were really, really urging Boeing to ground them. The 737 MAX, I'll say it again, the 737 MAX, until they could definitively prove, verify, record that this jet was safe. Yeah. I mean, you think you would want to do that anyway. You would think. People over profits, right? Oh, God, mm-hmm. you stole my life. Oh, fuck. Sorry. <laughs> well, you just said I mean, that. Not, not in here, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. You said no. that in another episode. <laughs> I did, yeah. Oh, no, I'm teasing you. I stole I think, her life. I think I do say that at some point in this case, though. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, it's like my favorite thing to say. Who knew? Dennis... Mullen, what's his fuck? Not his given name. <laughs> yes, I'll introduce him more formally, kinda later. Okay. okay. Um, he said Boeing extended condolences and sympathies to the families, but made very limited comments on the investigation following the first crash. It wasn't even an apology, but apology not accepted. <sighs> Privately, he said to have commented that an American pilot would have never gotten into that kind of situation. Are you fucking kidding me? Mm-hmm. And that the flight crew had not reacted to the MCAS in the manner that they had speculated pilots would or that they should have. Because they were trained on it, so... <laughs> Here's the kicker. This pilot got his training in the U.S., so fuck you very much. Right? The Lion Air pilot had done his training for the new 737 MAX on an iPad, according to his wife. Okay. No simulator training was offered because it was too expensive, and Boeing made sure they wouldn't have to go down that road. Wow. It's just like every other plane. It'll be fun. Mm-hmm. 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 Here's your iPad. Yeah, you've flown one, you can fly them all, right? Oh, my God. Also, if no one knew MCAS even existed, that kind of makes the comments by the Boeing CEO that pilots didn't react as they expected they would yeah. by turning it off kind of ludicrous. Yeah. How can you possibly know how someone will react to this piece of an airplane that they don't even know exists. Yeah. Like, how many pieces of a fucking airplane do they have to know? Yeah. And, like, you just... (laughs) And how do you turn something off that you don't know where it's at or what it does? Oh, and it gets better because they do have a fix. And, yeah, we'll we'll just turn it off. Is it like some complicated way to turn it off? I don't want to spoil it for you because we're going to get right into it here in a sec, but it's so much worse. Okay. When he admitted later that MCAS was not explained to pilots, they were never trained, he stated it was because they didn't want to overwhelm them. I hope he shit his pants when he finally had to admit that. They're flying a fucking plane. Yeah, he was like, oh, we didn't want them to have too much information to absorb. And it's like, you know, I think that pilots, like, they got a pretty good technical grasp on the whole plane thing. Yeah. Maybe give them all the information. If they can't absorb it, don't let them fly. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, (laughs) one way to know for sure is to train them, and then they'll know what to do. (laughs) Like, it seems so common sense really does have you ever heard that saying the one thing that isn't common is common sense yeah yeah Yeah. some variation thereof everybody's dad has a different way of saying it (laughs) (laughs) all right well dennis just shed his pants um also during this time in 2018 the public narrative that was put forth by ceo Mick shit his pants, Dennis Mullenberg, (laughs) as well as the FAA, was that these planes are, were, and always will be safe. I don't trust it. Yeah, I don't think I would either. In so many words, they were all too eager to blame what many would refer to as one badly run airline. Hmm. Okay. We'll come back to this because there is a reason that this was accepted at face value. 
what was needed was just an updated checklist for response in these scenarios. Yeah. Okay, but what scenario is that, though, exactly? Yeah. I was under the impression that this was a normal plane, not one with software to self-destruct right after takeoff. Right? Yeah. That's like, you just like nervous laugh the Ugh. whole time reading about this because you're like, this is so fucking scary. The narrative behind the curtain was, of course, very different, as you might have guessed. It was that large airlines were extremely concerned about the dangerous hidden software. Because, duh. Hidden software. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pilots from American Airlines in Texas recorded a, quote, tense meeting with Boeing execs that makes it clear Boeing underplayed the importance of MCAS in order to get approval for the new model from the FAA. Wow. Is there is who's running the show? Is it like a freaking a psycho really, murderer? It's a really great question. That's part of the problem. <laughs> Who is running the show here? Because it sounds like someone not so great. Yeah. Who wants it's a to lot of someone who are not so great. <laughs> They're having a murder meeting. Yeah, they are having a murder meeting. Whistleblowers got the feds to open up a criminal investigation into the plane's design. Technical experts at the FAA also privately questioned the official or public narrative, all the while backing the less scary story to the public. We know now that an FAA risk assessment report showed that over the next 30 years, there could be 15 more fatal crashes if there was not a fix to MCAS. That's a lot of fucking crashes. Oh, I've got the numbers to really help you get a handle on how bad this is. Okay. The report wasn't made public, at least initially, but remember, at this same time, they are literally telling the public that these planes are safe. The weather had actually been really good on the day of the crash in Jakarta. It's one of the first things that a lot of us start thinking about in terms of what could have affected a plane crash. Yeah. The pilot's wife, as well as his mother, his mother, who also worked as a pilot. Wow. Yeah, talked about how coverage after the crash focused on the blame game, questioning the flight crew's training. Lion Air had also been banned from flying in the U.S. and Europe because of its spotty safety track record. But they're not the only low-cost Indonesian airline that has received this restriction. A headline in the Hindu News article in October of 2018 said, Indonesian airline whose plane crashed a low-cost high flyer. So wow. it's very clear that there's a little bit of an effort here to try to pass the buck to either the flight crew, maybe not being qualified, or, oh, well, this is just some, you know, low-budget airline. Yeah. Interesting, right? It's so, fucked up. <laughs> yeah. But is it just me, or does it seem that that – starts to imply that those who fly on budget airlines should have expected this. Yeah. Or, or that they have to accept that they can't be guaranteed safe passage because of the lower rates. It's a literal, like, victim-blaming right. thing that they're doing. And 100%, if this happened freaking here on a <laughs> on a well-known airline, what would they have said then? Oh, there will be things. <laughs> And believe me, there were multiple publications with similar lines in their reporting. If you ask me, your assured safety is the baseline agreement between the customer, a passenger in this case, and any company that they make a purchase from. You may not be a doctor, but I'm pretty sure first do no harm. Yeah. When the only concession anyone should have to make in this instance is... Less legroom, okay? It shouldn't be that we accept that the lives of lower-income travelers or people of color are somehow less safe, less secure. 
that is not the world that I want to live in. No. Where we have different standards of safety in terms of basic things like travel. Ugh. It's stupid. I, nope. It's just stupid. That's all I can say. It's yeah, stupid. You, you're like, it's stupid. It's horrific. In the case of a horrific tragedy like this, shouldn't we just be investigating vigorously and not spending time speculating about shit like this? I mean, these are erroneous details. Even if it was an inexperienced pilot, I don't think that he pushed the nose of the plane directly downward into the Jakarta Bay. Yeah. I could be wrong. I mean, they have the black box shenanigans. Yeah. So, it's, I mean, they know. That made it pretty clear. So, I don't know. It's just, let's be honest. As an American corporate executive, if you can pass the blame to an airline with a less than sterling reputation or onto the flight crew or just a combination of both, maybe, so that your stock doesn't also take a nosedive. That's probably what you're going to do. So, fuck evil, greedy, rich people. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> you hear people say, eat the rich, but really soon here we're going to get to the turning point in the case where it's going to be the rich people that are going to have to eat crow. <laughs> Because it wouldn't take long for another one of these newfangled planes to crash oh. again. I mean. Killing everyone on board again. So they should have grounded the planes is what you're saying. Yeah, we'll get to that. Ugh. Fuck them right up the ass with the <laughs> Boeing. What, what is it? Seven something max? <laughs> <laughs> on that note um <laughs> we've got another promo roll that we are really excited to share today hello twisted humans do you find yourself wanting to know more about the latest murder conspiracy cults or haunting then this is the podcast for you we're bringing the most intense stories that'll keep you up at night he was found guilty of voluntary manslaughter and felonious assault but he was only sentenced to five months of probation. And this would be the last time that anyone ever saw Fiona. Uh, there are allegedly two women who also drowned in the first class pool. Was this the same glowing green that they'd seen in the darkness the night before? He had refused to sit near the wagon cloth because of stains on it, which were most likely blood. Join us every Tuesday for a glass of wine or sangria and a dose of true crime. I'm Alicia. And I'm Sierra. And this is Twisted, Twisted and, and Uncorked. Uncorked. You guys, we're back! On March 10th of 2019, less than five months later, an Ethiopian Airlines flight crew has the same horrific experience on Flight 302. Just six minutes following takeoff from Addis Ababa, Every single passenger along with the crew were dead. 157 people in total. Jesus. Yeah. The pilot, Yared Gedichu, was 29 years old, and at the time, he was the youngest captain at the airline, but he had almost nine years of flight experience. Wow. He had the new checklist that... Boeing swore would solve everything. Remember you asked about that, Cassie? Oh, my God. His first officer, Ahmed Noor, Mohammed Noor, was only 25, and he had far less experience. But nothing that either one of them did seemed to write the ill-fated jetliner. But this is what happens when regulatory bodies are governed just as much, if not more, by the very companies they're intended to regulate. Mm. The FAA had allowed far too much of the oversight in terms of engineering and safety in recent decades to be undertaken by the very company manufacturing the planes. The flight manifest included passengers of 35 different nationalities. They were law students, charity workers, 
environmental advocates and UN staffers, and a much-loved Nigerian writer and author. The black box from the Ethiopian Airlines crash was analyzed in France and was found to have a very similar flight pattern to the doomed Lion Air jetliner. Mm. So I think a lot of times what I'm not sure if this is something that maybe, like, as the public, you know, we don't fly planes, (laughs) all of us, Um, something that we forget or may not have an awareness around is, aside from the audio recording of, like, the flight crew, there's a lot of data about the flight path and Mm. the responsiveness, the functionality of the actual aircraft that gets recorded by the black box. So to see that, you know, they had this new checklist and we're seeing that the pattern is very much the same. What gives? Yeah. That was supposed to save people. Mm -hmm. Boeing CEO Dennis Molenberg was forced out following this second crash, but not without his $60 million parachute what Mm -hmm. what so you know all you have to do is just add another zero on the end of his uh exit bonus and he could buy twitter (laughs) and have money left to spare jeez (sighs) terrible thing that these payouts are referred to as parachutes when in this case those aboard the passenger plane were probably unlikely to survive this horrific malfunction even if they'd each had one. I was wondering if that's what it was actually called or if you made that up. No, that's "That's what it's typically uh, called. That's pretty fucked. Yeah. Accidents involving planes are extremely rare. In 2018, there was a fatal crash once in every 3 million flights. That's that's pretty good odds. Yeah. So when considering all flight types, there were 41 total that year, including those that were non-fatal. 18 involved the 737. More than any other aircraft, even according to Boeing's data. Wow. The 737 had a frequency of fatal accidents equal to one in every 200,000 flights. Mm. That doesn't seem good. No. These numbers aren't looking good. No. That is incredibly high for modern aviation. It's actually more akin to the early days of the jet. Oh. If that tells you anything. (laughs) One in 25 of these planes experienced some sort of safety issue in the short time following delivery and their grounding. Because that's right, if you didn't remember from the news, this particular Boeing aircraft would be grounded in multiple countries, even in the U.S. But again, remember, somehow this plane is perfectly safe. Ooh. The FAA's review of flight data from the second crash in March of 2019 resulted in a release of information indicating that the Ethiopian flight crew realized that the MCAS was kicking on and reacted in the way that they had been directed by Boeing's revised training and briefing information. Then the jack screw was found And it was in its full nose down position, which I get probably means very little to you unless you have ever flown a plane, but stick with me. Veteran pilots reflected that their experience and the information at hand indicated hands down the MCAS was responsible for the crash. 30 minutes after learning about this, the Cheeto in chief at the time grounded 737 Maxes until further notice. Captain Dan Carey reflected that, to his knowledge, it was the only airplane 
to ever have been grounded by any sitting president. Wow. Should have been done the first time. Yep. Internal emails would later be revealed where Boeing employees had said point blank they would not have allowed their own families to fly on a Boeing aircraft, much less on the MAX. Wow. They cited debris being left on planes or equipment omitted in error or even knowingly because of their production rushes Mm -hmm. at the manufacturing facilities. Wow. But how in the ever-loving fuck did we get here? Like it's an airplane, dude. Yeah. Check it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, like I said, it wasn't always, you know, just an oversight. Sometimes these things, they were just rushed through regardless. But like, um, that's what I'm saying. Like, why are you rushing a fucking airplane? Mm -hmm. Like, Cassie, you are going to be so mad. (laughs) You're going to get so mad. Having emotionally processed this already, I was so, there's not a word, livid. Yeah. Starts to touch the edges. Having been in business for over a century, Boeing, the Seattle-based company, had once prided itself and instilled confidence in the excellence of engineering in their aircrafts. They seemed hell-bent on perfectionism until they weren't. As the biggest exporter in the U.S., Boeing's over $100 billion in annual revenue is quite staggering. Execs from Boeing have long gone on to rise to even greater positions of power. Many within our own government, including the Department of Defense, the Justice Department, and the FAA. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. Though Boeing had acquired 30 companies over its long corporate life, the one that everyone seems to be talking about these days is that of McDonnell Douglas Corp. In December of 1996, for a very unlucky $13 billion. It's <laughs> unlucky in multiple ways. <laughs> After the merger was completed in 1997, the company culture transitioned from one concerned with quality, where engineers were respected for their expertise, to that of one driven by the singular goal of being a share holder friendly as possible. Mm-hmm. Boeing pressured pilots and engineers to skimp on safety measures to cut costs. Jeez. I just, if you're making that much fucking money, why? Just why, Caitlin? Answer I'm, me now. I'm fucking shaking with rage still. <sighs> it makes me so angry. It's like you can't even think of what to say either. You're just like, no. J- <laughs> Boeing began selling bare bones planes which is a sentence that should not exist. Items that their competitor Airbus provided as standard would become options on their crazy a la carte menu. For instance, a backup fire extinguisher in the cargo hold. Because who would ever even think you'd need that, right? I mean, as if manning a jet wasn't enough pressure. Let's coat it in fire. They like... It was an option for mm-hmm. a backup yep. fire extinguisher to be on the plane. Like, mm-hmm. nah, we don't, we might yeah. not need that. It's yeah. fine. We don't need these lifeboats on the Titanic. It's right. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's a really great example. <laughs> this item wasn't mandated by the FAA because they're looking out for us, right? Mm. Okay. Get this the angle of attack indicator was also considered optional equipment costing an additional eighty thousand dollars the absence of this device of course eventually playing a role in the doomed flights in 2018 and 2019 so this sensor that we've determined and combined with the software we've determined caused more than one fatal crash they actually listed as optional on some of the planes that they were selling during this time. Wow. 
So if the plane <laughs> didn't have the sensor, it wouldn't have crashed or? I don't know how to answer that okay. question technically. Probably it would have been better to not have the sensor. Right? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> they made but it I, seem like it was like a safety mm -hmm. option. But I don't think that as much as they say that like it's not like this primary thing or whatever, like – Basically, all of the pilots have said, like, sure, it's not your primary source of, like, flight data um, as a pilot. But, I mean, they were horrified at the idea that, like, all of these things would just be, like, I'm sorry, what do you mean that's not standard? Yeah. It's just. Yeah, exactly. I, <laughs> like, what do you even say? I, I literally, it's just, like, I, it doesn't make any sense. There's so much. Yeah. There's so much more. Eventually, Airbus estimated that on average, there were, okay, deep breath, you guys, there were $2.5 to $3 million worth of what their competitor considered features that came standard in their planes. Wow. That's right. This comparison is to the bare bones model 737. That Boeing had become, had, had begun aggressively pushing, mm. especially in foreign markets. Mm. And then they're going to blame the foreign pilots. Right. And the foreign airlines when they crash. Oh, boy. <sighs> I just. <laughs> I know. Not a lot. Not a lot of back and forth on this one, it's right? Really <laughs> it's really hard. to. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, I no comment. Fucked. It's all fucked. It's yeah. fucked. Can I just keep saying that over yeah. and over again? <laughs> yeah. It's the only thing I can recommend. This is the very same jetliner that is likely to become a very commonly used plane for commercial flights in the next several years. Yay. <laughs> Ryanair and Alaska have both contributed to the over 3,000 total purchases of 737 MAXs. So don't fly Alaska or Ryan whatever Air. the other, Ryan. <laughs> I've never even heard of that one. Yeah, it's not, it's, um, it's international. Mm. So you would probably only ever interact with that airline if you were somewhere abroad. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Engineers at Boeing still claim not enough has been changed within the aircraft to avoid potential problems with safety and future tragedies. They might be on to something because the 737 MAX remains the only large commercial airplane that doesn't have an electronic checklist to guide pilots, which means they have to flip through their handbook a physical paper book in the moment to try to resolve issues. Though you'll be relieved to know the 737 MAX now requires additional simulator training. These scenarios, though, are apparently not included within that curriculum or continuing education. Well, what the fuck is the point? <sighs> not really sure. So Boeing didn't end up being able to thwart this clear and obvious necessity with the simulator training for pilots. In a twist of fate that seems like very cruel irony, the criminal penalty levied against Boeing, $243.6 million dollars, is said to be a fair approximation of what it would have cost to provide the simulator training in the first place. Wow. I hate money. Can I just say that? Fuck yeah. money. <laughs> mm. All those people, like, that's what their lives were worth to you, basically. <laughs> Cassie, you're going to just gonna be boiling over with rage oh. i'm hot i gotta take this blankie off yeah. yeah i'm hot i was gonna say yeah you're gonna get hated <laughs> you're like yeah but like literally <laughs> all right so that's just a little taste of some of the 
legal proceedings related to these crashes now. Former Boeing pilot Mark Forkner faced both fraud and wire fraud charges. Now, he might be a real shit, and I suspect he probably is, but I didn't dive deep on him because I think it's clear that corporate greed is the real big bad wolf here. Mm -hmm. We keep saying it. (laughs) The fraud charges were dropped in February of this year by a Texas judge due to a technicality. (laughs) So that, I mean, the wire fraud charges still stand, just FYI. Um, But that was something that was a newer piece of information that I don't I don't recall at least hearing about in the documentary. That's mm. pretty breaking news. Oh. That documentary came out, you know, right around that time, I think. So but I have to say that it makes it seem all the more unfair that in the short time since the overwhelming aftermath of these crashes that All of the executives seem to have landed into cushy new gigs or settled into their golden years of retirement on what I have to imagine are extremely lavish luxury estates without facing much more than, you know, a little bit of intense questioning or maybe a little dash of public scrutiny. Yeah, they have no trouble sleeping at night. No. So if you were hoping there would be justice of any kind on a criminal level, that's even more laughable than some feel about the monetary settlement, where I have bad news. Great. (laughs) In the end, the government settled for deferred prosecution of one count of criminal fraud conspiracy And in this case, it's still not directed at the source of all of this, as far as I'm concerned. This charge was based on Boeing's pilot's misrepresentation of MCAS. The pilots. The pilots who didn't know about it? (laughs) It's their fault? Well, the pilots that Boeing hires... To test the planes. Oh, okay. They tried to pass it off to them. Did they? But did they know about the fucking thing? (laughs) They knew it existed and they tested it to (sighs) see, like, okay, how do you deal with this, you know, thing? But they knew about it. Yeah. They knew about that. So, of course, they can react to it. And they said, ah, you know, this is what you would do in this instance. It's corporate Boeing that kept that information from the hands of the average pilot. Yeah. I just don't see why, unless they simply forgot. Yeah. Again, I can't say that I would necessarily hold them blameless, but come on. Yeah. You know who I blame? Hmm. I think it's the fucking plane's fault. Yeah. Right? I think we should just ban planes. Just What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I have an idea. <sighs> Bezos, Musk, Bronson. I don't care who. Just one of you, do us a favor. Please take the Boeing billionaire bros with you when you make your way to space in one of your dick-shaped spaceships. Seriously. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Bye. Hopefully there's not a sensor malfunction on your way. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. All right. That's not really goodbye. Obviously, there's just a few things I need to add in closing. That would have been really sweet. (laughs) The Boeing facility just south of Seattle sprawls out over a stretch of East Marginal Way for over a mile. Boeing is a big deal to our friends up north. It has a namesake airport nearby, a museum displaying the original 747, and even an aviation-focused high school that's historically been partially funded by the company. Boeing even once employed Ed Wells, who had helped to design the B-52 bomber. Boeing's efforts during World War II are often remembered with a great deal of reverence. But obviously at this point, we're all aware that the company has strayed very far off the path since being established in 1916 by Bill Boeing, who was a timber baron and heir to a family fortune, and his friend, naval officer Conrad Westervelt. 
both had actually been educated as engineers, which is a really great jumping off point for this type of endeavor. Right, yeah. (laughs) Both experienced the thrill of a plane ride when they visited the 4th of July fair at Lake Washington. Aww. So wholesome. That is wholesome. (laughs) Afterwards, the pair were convinced that both having been educated as engineers, they could create something better. Wow. Yeah. Bill took flying lessons and bought a plane. On June 15th of 1916, Bill took the first plane they had designed with the help from others they hired onto their team for its maiden voyage through the clouds. This freaking thing was made of spruce, Irish linen, and likely more than a few thoughts and prayers. What? (laughs) (laughs) What's most criminal about this whole case, aside from the obvious tragedy of lost lives and the trauma of their loved ones, is that a company started by engineers with the utmost respect for that field in every aspect was bastardized by some Wall Street cronies that had already tanked their own company. Jeez. They took something beautiful like an aircraft that has helped humanity to progress in nearly immeasurable ways. Something that was created by a deeply esteemed company with a re- with a reputation for being ethical and always taking the utmost care in terms of safety. Then, like the planes they built, everything came crashing down for the simple fact that their greed led to what is perhaps one of the greatest and most unkind follies. They placed profits before people. Yeah, they did. There's still quite a bit to discuss and unpack, but that's going to be Patreon bonus content. So if you're not a member of the Patreon, get over there. This is a Patreon bonus of about equal length to a regular episode because I literally can't stop. (gasps) I got to sit through another episode's worth of this shit. Yeah. (laughs) Just kidding. Seriously. (laughs) I know. I'm so sorry. (laughs) We're going to talk about what's gone on during the longest, cruelest decade ever, a.k.a. COVID quarantine, as well as the funeral service held for the one-year anniversary of the Addis Ababa crash. But for now, let's get into our tarot reading. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So we're thinking about shitty fucking shitty people who make too much money and don't care about human life. Yeah. Just, you know, what I like to think about on a nice, a nice, a nice, a nice Wednesday afternoon. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, gosh. We shuffled a lot pre thinking about the case. You caught the cards. That was weird. I have kind of felt like I was going to like turn it over. Oh, did you like, want that card? <laughs> I don't know. I was like, why have I, I've never done that. Why know. am I doing that? I'm like, okay. So I'm going to set that one aside. I'm not sure if that's right. Okay. I'm just going on. That was so bizarre. <gasps> oh, we're still feeling this tarot thing out. But I'm like really wondering what this card is, Caitlin. Oh, that's the tower. Do you like how I show the Patreon That's first? That's a terrible <laughs> card. It's not great, right? It's literally, this chick is impaled on a rock. Mm. This is terrible. Mm. Okay. I think they might just go together, you know? Yeah, maybe. I'm I'm definitely going to look up our um, Ace of Wands this to see. This is the see. Ace of Wands that she was felt drawn to. Yeah. That's really strange. They're both in the upright position. Gosh, the tower. <laughs> I know. Isn't that... The crown is falling. Ooh. So I'm going to start with the tower because that's the one that I intended to draw. And even though for whatever reason, I felt like the card above it. Uh, so I'm going to start with that. Keywords are change, freedom, Upsets, destruction of the old. The tower usually depicts a fortress-like structure. 
similar to those remaining from medieval times in parts of Europe, being destroyed by fire or lightning. Hmm. In some decks, including the Rider Waite Smith deck, the tower's crown is being blown off by the fiery impact. Weird. <laughs> the blast catapults human figures out of the windows. Like the death card and the devil card, the tower tends to engender fear when it comes up in a reading. However, the tower does not necessarily represent ruin and devastation, although its appearance usually does herald swift and dramatic change, sometimes shocking and upsettingly, oh, an extremely upsetting change. Many people interpret the tower as signifying catastrophe, but whatever disruption or destruction it heralds is ultimately for the best. <gasps> this is crazy. Cassie. Oh my god. My whole body, the shudder that just went through me. I saw we saw it. There is an extra excerpt before the upright interpretation. Okay. September eleventh. The tower's graphic imagery played out in our own lives during the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center. That physical event depicts literally what the frightening card shows, something the tarot's early artists could not have imagined. The tower often represents collapse of a social order or established system. And New York's Twin Towers were symbols of established wealth and power. In an instant, the attack changed the way Americans thought about their position in the world. I am so... Why are we I'm, shocked? Like... I know. Honestly, I'm just freaked the I fuck so, out. I know. It's so weird when this happens. I mean, what are the odds that this is a card that literally talks about another plane crash? Yeah. I... And like... it. It said impact on yeah. it, and then it was talking about, like, wealth oh and power gosh. crashing down. Like, cra did it say crashing? Collapse. Yeah. Yeah, collapse. Um, it's, you know, definitely indicates destruction, ruin, devastation, catastrophe. Oh, my gosh. That's so... <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> like, we ask for it, and then we get it, and we're I like... I know. There's still like a little part of me that expects for it to be not quite a hundred percent. You know, I expect for it to be interesting to get, you know, a little bit of insight from whatever we glean in the tarot reading. And then, yeah, yeah that is just. It's like flashbacks to the train one I did, the train <gasps> crash. Oh, yes, um, where the, the card even had people trudging through the snow. snow. Yeah, and like just this whole like reading of this card reminds me of that, like how accurate. I think disasters oh like gosh. this are just our thing. Well, <laughs> I mean, kind of. <laughs> If we get really am, good readings. Yeah, I'm blown away. There's more, though. So this is, uh, yeah, that's not even the interpretation. <laughs> yeah. Upright. When this card appears, it usually means you've ignored or denied something that's rotten and needs to be blown apart. God. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're probably surprised, but you shouldn't be. Because you knew. Uh, you knew changes were necessary, but you refused to take action. Then something happens. Losing a job, the end of a relationship, an accident, a financial setback that forces you to face reality big time. Holy shit balls! I mean, almost, I, I can think of a way that every single one of those things happened. Yeah. Your life is collapsing around you, but that old worn out structure had to go. The tower demands you free yourself from the self-created fortress in which you've imprisoned yourself in the wake of the chaos a new order can grow. You guys. 
is there still a chance we're going to remake the shit show that is the FAA? Maybe that's what this card is supposed to answer that oh my question. God. Well, I'm af- I'm afraid that I have some information that we're going to talk about in the Patreon that oh. we'll see. Mm. I, I'm curious about this second card now. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh. In a reading about money, this card heralds a major change in your finances. An unexpected loss or setback may cause you to reassess your attitudes about money and perhaps free you from your attachment to wealth, status, possessions, and the related responsibilities, like maybe your responsibility to shareholders Hmm. might have a different perspective on that. If the reading is about your work, the tower may represent a sudden job loss or change in your workplace. Yes, you're shocked and feel the rug's been pulled out from under you, but this may be exactly what you need to escape the walls that trapped you. Hmm. (sighs) Wow. (laughs) This is another extra segment. The collapse of the tower is echoed in description of shamanic initiation, where the candidate experiences in a vision a symbolic dismemberment, whereby his body is stripped down to its bones. Oh, goodness. Oh, that reminds me of like the bare bones plane, though, that you were yeah. talking about, too. We're going to talk about the people, bones but... in the Patreon Like bonus. real bones? I don't want to say, I don't want to say, I don't want to say, (laughs) I don't want to spoil it for you or for anybody that's going to go and listen to it after this. Okay. Ace of Wands. So let's see. I don't know. This is really interesting. I feel like, what can you add to that? I don't know. Hopefully it looks hopeful. It's, I mean, both of these are like in the sky too, which I thought was kind of interesting. Oh my gosh. Okay. Ace of Wands. Our keywords are opportunity, inspiration, adventure, creativity, a new start. Aces signify beginnings. They also represent focused energy and clear singular intent. In the Rider, Wait, Smith, Tarot, and some other decks, the Ace of Wands shows a disembodied hand emerging from a cloud. Oh my god, I want to cry. It's just because it was... An airplane. I know. Grasping a stick from which new shoots grow. The message, here's an opportunity, grab it. Some decks picture only a wand, often one that's large and elaborate, like a ruler's scepter or a witch's ceremonial tool. And then we actually have two extra segments on this card as well. Highest or lowest, In modern day games of chance, the ace often stands as the highest card. In the tarot, however, it occupies the other end of the spectrum. Not the lowest, but the earliest step. I feel like that's really interesting. The ace, just because like by virtue, it can be either the highest or the lowest. And it's kind of what you make of it, right? Yeah. Upright, this ace symbolizes a new beginning, one full of passion and rich with promise. You're ready to express yourself in a new dynamic way. You want to be seen in a new light. You're bringing your creativity to bear in an exciting endeavor, and you're psyched about the possibilities opening up before you. I think of this as the go for it card. In a reading about money, this ace suggests profits coming from a creative venture. It can also mean you're investing your resources and energy in a new enterprise you feel passionate about. Feel passionate about safety, okay? Seriously. Feel passionate about your jets no longer crashing out of the sky six minutes into a flight. I'm hoping that's what that's meaning. In a reading about work, the card shows you expressing yourself passionately through a creative endeavor, perhaps even forging a new identity. You're totally focused on your objective and your enthusiasm will help bring success. In a reading about a relationship, the ace promises new love of a highly romantic, joyful, and passionate kind. 
It can also mean loyalty, commitment, and a strong sense of purpose, perhaps of a creative nature in an existing partnership. So interesting. And the last bit here, it's the second extra segment. You are always nearer to the divine and the true sources of your power than you think. The lure of the distant and the difficult is deceptive. The great opportunity is where you are. Every place is under the stars. Every place is the center of the world. I Same. I <laughs> I was so. <laughs> that was chilling. What you just read. They were blaming the people in like the other countries for having all these, right. you know, issues with the plane, and it's like you were looking down on them. But like we're all under the stars, baby. Yeah. We're all the same. I'm so freaked out. I know, oh, me too. God. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. I mean, this is just wild because yeah. I've I've literally never felt. I've never felt drawn to, like, pick up the top section when I cut it like that. I've never felt like, I don't, why, why, why was I attracted to that? And it's, I got to go with your intuition, do what you feel is right in the moment. And it usually, I mean, it works out. I feel like we needed that hopeful card. Mm Mm-hmm. I cannot believe (laughs) what just happened right now. (laughs) <laughs> it's so weird. I'm I I feel like we're never quite this speechless. Yeah. If I'm you blown guys away. Wanna let us know what you think about the reading if you have any new hot takes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for pulling us back to reality. Yeah. I'm just like I, I we just can't uh, sit here staring at each other with our mouths open. <laughs> like, I, uh, sorry, Patreon. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, they're gonna they're gonna get another um, little bonus mm-hmm. about this case, and I think we we don't always do it for a Patreon bonus, but I think we should do another tarot read with that. So, we could. Yeah. yeah, whatever you feel like is right. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I'm gonna go buy a lottery ticket after this because right. apparently <laughs> I'm I'm like I'm really hitting today. So, <laughs> Whew. all right, have, have a, a creepy, creepy ass day. day. See you next Tuesday. Bye. Thanks for hanging out. We miss you already. So for all of you that are listening, if you have any true crime or paranormal stories that you want us to share, maybe with the whole Pacific Northwest. Yes, we would love to read them on the pod. (laughs) Yes, we will read them out loud. (laughs) Not just in our heads. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> they don't have to be from the Pacific Northwest if you would like to share. Email us at PNW Haunts and Homicides at gmail.com. It's all spelled out, no special characters. Super duper easy peasy. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Same thing as the email at PNW Haunts and Homicides, all spelled out, no special characters. Please also rate and review us on whatever platform you're listening to and check out our stories on social media because our meme game is hot. (laughs) Agreed. (laughs) And if you agree, like Caitlin, you can also find us on Patreon and support the show. Bitchin. Sorry, so then we won't have to go watch the documentary. I mean, you can if you want to. Well, Sully's in it. The pilot that landed the thing on that one pond? Yeah. The lake? The Hudson. The river? Uh, Pond, lake, river. Which which is the Hudson? I think it's a a river. Yeah. The Hudson (laughs) River. Yeah. Yeah. So the actual guy was in it, not Tom Hanks? Not Tom Hanks. Okay.